The next step in checking the lathe for alignment is to run a test bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to face this off, put a center in it, stretch it out, true it up with the tailstock to get it as, um, as straight as we can. And then we're going to take the, the tailstock off and see uh, how we can cut both uh, out here and close to the head and see how far apart those two things are. You should use the largest piece of steel you have. The best I have is this 12L14 that is uh, just over an inch. So we're going we're gonna to start with this and see how it looks. All right, well, I spent some time today really experimenting on the speeds and feeds with this 12L14 and the bits that I had, and the magic happened with the new bit. And I tell you what, I mean, looking at the old one, other than some color on the tip, uh, it's very hard to tell what was wrong with it. But the moment I put the new one on, the results, I mean, they speak for themselves 10 times better. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the tailstock and then we're going to fire this guy up and we're going to take a very light pass here and here just enough to clean up each side to make sure that we have good contact um, all the way around front and back we'll measure and see if we have any any twist in our in our lathe any alignment problems Okay, so even with these calipers, which are not as accurate as a tenth micrometer, we've got quite a variation here. So we're at one inch, 049, so 49 thousandths. And up here, We're at 52. So we've got a difference of three. All right, now let's check this with the micrometer. It's not a tenth micrometer, but it's the best one I have. So 
So I'm getting 120, 150, yep, 152. One fifty two, about one fifty two and a half. One fifty two and a half. Okay, so pretty consistent there. And we are at 149 so actually the the um, the, uh, the digital caliper is actually quite accurate 149. And 149. Great. Okay. So we're off by three. So as I think this through, if I'm wider here on the tailstock end, that means that my the cutting tool, cutting tool is is further away. And as so it feels like I'm counterclockwise twisted out. So that's pulling my tool away, making it a larger diameter. As it gets closer to the headstock, it rotates back to the right, and that drives it in, making it a smaller. So if I am, if the, if the tailstock is rotated counterclockwise, I need to push it back a little bit. What I have is a some old shim stock. This is about a thousandth of an inch. I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start with two. I'm going to fold it in half and install it uh, same way that I did when we were uh, getting it close with the level, and we'll see what that does. All right. So here we are at the tailstock. You can see this is the, the shim that I put in when we were roughing it out. I'm going to use this jack to take some of the load off. take the shim stock I'm gonna fold it in half and we'll slide it in underneath the drip tray and above the C channel
Again, I want to try to be consistent with that torque. All right, let's make another cut. Right, I'm going to look to take about one and a half thousandth off of each. Um, so about three total diameter. measurement with the calipers since we know they're fairly accurate. It's 46 and a half. Those are three very different answers. Uh, let's see, let me zero it out. We'll try again here. So that's at 42. And this is at 45. So I'm still looking at three. And we didn't really do anything. So let's check on the micrometer. So that is 40. Say 47. It's coming in at 44. Yep, 44. Seven, forty-six and a half. So we're still, still chasing. So let's chase some more. All right, I put another couple thousandth. I put another couple thou underneath that same spot. See if we can twist it back towards the middle. Let's give it a try.
All right, another moment of truth. Okay, so that is 22. And that is 23. 22. It's 22 in a little bit. We're very close now. Yeah, that's 22, not a half, but more than 22. And that's 23. All right, you know what? I'm going to call this this done. I'm, I'm actually happy with the results. They're not. It's not perfect. I'm not sure if perfect is possible with all the variables that I have going on. But for a first time going through this, I feel pretty good that I've learned a ton about measurement, how to set the precision level, uh, how to check the, the my gauge blocks or the um, the one two three blocks using the uh, the last word, um, how to set up the lathe understand much better what my what my lathe is capable of where its weaknesses are when it comes to you know again this discrepancy so overall i'm going to call this a, a a big win but we'll park it for now and maybe come back to it another time and see if anything has settled or anything's changed and then make some tweaks at that point but again thanks for hanging in there i really appreciate it hope you learned something uh, if you did or if you didn't just like the video that would really help me out um, and then subscriptions, uh, subscribe uh, would be great. And you can see as I journey through this process and learn a lot more about um, how all this stuff works, you can come with me. Appreciate any comments, suggestions, uh, much appreciated. So have a great, great day, great weekend. Um, really appreciate you watching. Thanks.